Hello, and welcome back to the Making of Bird game. Last time, we started on the combat system and created our first enemy, the Chompy. Today, we're going to add another new enemy and add a little bit of spice to the combat. But first, I really needed to fix the attack in the last video. I said before that I didn't really like the animation, but instead, I found the issue was with how the attack actually worked. I made the bird fall slowly while using the move, and it actually made a huge difference. Now, technically, if you're low enough to the ground, it will still auto-cancel, but the extra air time really helps you hit your target and actually complete the animation instead of just falling right through it. And since it stalls you a little bit, it does have a bit of a movement niche. I added the glide back, but the glide makes you keep moving forward so you can stay suspended in the air for a little bit using the attack instead of moving while gliding. And after I fixed that, I decided it's time to add one more enemy to the game to add a little bit more variety. And per request, I'll be showing a little bit more of my process for creating and animating characters. And I'll obviously start with an idea. And just by looking at the enemies we have so far, we have a flying enemy and a static enemy. I think it's time for a grounded roaming enemy. In grass areas and video games, it's very common to have an enemy type that disguises itself as like a bush or something. So I think I'm going to make an enemy based on that concept. I think making a six legged flea bug spider thing that wears a bush could be cool. So I'm going to start by sketching it out in a sprite. Instead of sketching the bush from scratch, I'm actually going to steal some of the tiles from my grass tile set, and I'm going to alter them a little bit just so they don't look exactly like the background. After I've blocked out the general size I want the enemy to be, I start adding some details. For this enemy, it's really just going to be the legs. What I like to do is I like to make another layer and make a silhouette of the character. I think if it reads well as a silhouette, it's probably going to look good with more detail on it. And then once I get the shape that I want, I flatten the layers to make it one thing, and then I start adding the eyes and any other small little things I need to add to the character. And just a side note, I thought making the eyes yellow would be a cool idea, because maybe it eats the butterflies and it works like a flamingo where their diet kind of affects the color of them in some way. But it just didn't look right to me, so I scrapped that idea and I changed it later on. And after I get a main static pose I'm happy with, I start animating in action. I'm going to start with an animation for it going to sleep and waking back up. And when I do this kind of animation, I usually start with the extremes. So I'll make a frame of him sleeping, and then I'll stitch it together with in-betweens later on. And this animation is just a few frames, and he does a little jump when he starts to transition. And then to do the wake-up animation, I just reverse the sleep animation, so he does a little pop when he wakes up. And of course, I could make them different, but that would take more time, and I think this is fine, at least for now. Now it's time for a walk animation, and walk animations are usually pretty difficult. My character also has three visible legs and six total, so I do need to figure out the pattern and how the legs should move. I mean, I could guess, but I'm generally more successful if I look for a reference. I found this video about how some robotics researchers still need flies to find the most efficient way to walk with six legs. Long story short, they found two types of walking, the tripod gait and the bipod gait, and basically they're named by how many feet are touching the ground at one time. The bipod gait is faster, but it's very rarely used. I'm going to go with the tripod gait because it seems more common in nature, and even though my enemies aren't going to be walking up walls, I think it's important that this feels and looks like a bug. So now that I have my reference, I slow it down frame by frame and I take out a couple key poses. The pattern seems to be that the front and back legs are synced, and the middle leg does the opposite. I start the animation with the legs, and once I get the pattern down, I add some overlapping action to the rest of the body. This is where I really start to feel the limitations of my skill and pixel art animation. It's really hard to get it to read well with just a few pixels, because even with a reference, I think it just looks okay. Maybe if I get good, I'll come back and fix it. Anyways, I also added a little jump attack. It'll use this when you get close to it. Now the actual movement of this attack will be done using in-game physics, that's why it doesn't move yet. And if I do it that way, I don't have to shift the hitbox to fit the animation as much. I think we can get away with it for the sleep and wake animations, but for the actual jump, I think this way is probably better. The name for this enemy is going to be the Wandering Shrub. It's just kind of this weird turtle bug thing that disguises itself as a bush. Now before we add this new enemy into the game, I think it's really important to add a little bit of juice. Because right now, you can barely even tell when you get hit. Like how is the game going to make any sense if there's not even any feedback? To fix this problem, I did something that I've never done before. Use an asset from the Unity Asset Store. Generally, I like to avoid using assets, but this one in particular is really easy to use and will save me a lot of time from having to code each interaction myself. 
Feel also makes it super easy to add multiple effects at the same time. And now, when the player takes damage, time stops for a second, the screen shakes, the player flashes white, and a sound effect plays. And you receive haptic feedback if you are using a controller. I will leave a link in the description if you want to check out the asset for yourself. It does cost money, but it is on sale pretty often. I recommend waiting for one of the sales because sometimes you can get it for like 50 or 60% off or even more. But since this saved me a lot of time, I figured I'd put it on your radar. After getting some of the feedback working, I decided to rework how the charge attacks are going to work in my game. Instead of making the moves change based on your health, I'm going to make them chargeable only when at full health. I made a short particle effect to show when you're charging, and for the new boosted aerial attack, instead of the bird attacking with its claws, it'll use its wings to create a fiery tornado that deals damage multiple times. For the record, this art is a placeholder, but you could expect it to be about this size. The tornado decays after about 2 seconds and is faster than a butterfly so it can be used to chase him down. Damage numbers are still to be determined, but on this test dummy that I made you can usually get one wing hit and two of the tornado hits, and I think that combined should be worth about two regular aerial attacks. Overall I think this attack is pretty good, but it might be a little bit overkill for our current enemies. There's still a lot of work to do, but I think the game is really starting to come together. If you are at all interested in seeing how it turns out, consider subscribing. That way YouTube will be more likely to recommend you my next video, and well, I'm not exactly going to be spamming your feed, so why not? Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.